dot draw. Then we'll implement repaint before I forget. And now when we run, we have our white ball on our dark grey background. Well, it's not a ball, it's a rectangle. But hey, there we go. But as you can see, it's not actually moving. So we're going to be making our move method now. And we're going to say public void move. And we are going to say x plus equals the x direction and y plus equals the y direction and then we're going to say if the or I'll add a comment first um, bounce the ball when edge is detected and we did this in, an, in my basic collision detection tutorial we're going to say if the ball if the x of the ball goes less than or equal to zero then we're going to set the x direction to plus one because it was zero is over here so if it reaches over here it needs to go this way and then we're going to say if x goes greater than or equal to um let's see 400 except it's 15 wide so 385 then we're going to set the x direction to minus one and I'm actually going to add a block here because along with these methods we're going to need to add a thing that adds to the score because when they hit the edges um, I'll add a comment and now we'll do the same for the y and we don't need to set the score if it hits the y because they're the top and the bottom if y goes less than or equal to zero then set y direction to plus one because it's going to want to move downwards and zero on the y-axis starts at the top and then if y is greater than or equal to um, 285 set y direction to minus one and now that our move is implemented we can put it straight into our run method and then make the thread sleep for however long we want and I'm going to say 4 milliseconds and then we're going to start our thread and to do this we need to make our ball object static first of all so we can use it in our main method and I'll add a comment saying um, create and start threads and we're going to create a new thread called t1 or we'll call it ball actually thread ball equals new thread and then we as a parameter we need to say what object we want a thread of and that is b which is our ball and then we say ball dot start to start the thread and i think um i made a small mistake and that is for plus equals x you need to say ball dot x and ball dot y to make sure we're accessing the ball's movement and then that means we'll also need to change that to this And now if we run this, we can see that our ball is bouncing around the screen. And it's going quite fast, so I'm going to slow the speed down a bit. And also I'm going to, as you can see, it goes a little bit off the top, so I'm just going to take away some leeway of that. We're going to say 70. And then I'm also going to set the thread sleep to 6 or seven and I'm not sure if you guys can see um, I'm just gonna wait this should be 85 still and this should be changed to 70 the y direction or no sorry this needs to be changed to 15 there we go And I don't know if you guys can see because I can't drag it quick enough, but when we start our game, it randomly selects an X and Y direction, so it will bounce in a different direction each time. And let's see. Now we can create our paddles. So I'm going to create a new class called um, Paddle. 
and it's part of the package Pong game. And we're going to be doing something I haven't showed you before on this, and that is creating an ID. Implements runnable. There we go. And we're just going to say public paddle to create a thing. And now, since we want two players and we don't want to create two separate classes with the exact same thing, we're going to be creating an ID um, parameter in our paddle right here. And the ID parameter is going to. <laughs> Sorry, delete this. The ID parameter is going to tell whether it's player one or player two. And then in our methods, we'll update uh, accordingly on what to do. So add our try and catch into our main method. Ah, there we go. And while true. Um, let's see. We need an X for the paddle, a Y for the paddle, and an ID. So int x, int y, int id, and the paddle itself needs an x, a y, and it also needs a y direction because it's going to be moving up and down. And we will finish this statement with a semicolon, as all good Java programmers should. And now we're going to set the x directions. This dot x equals x, this dot y equals y, and I realize this is getting repetitive, but this is just to sort of generally show you how to make put your skills put your skills towards a constructive game. And also you'll have something to show for it when you're done with this tutorial. So stick around for this tutorial. And I'm also going to need to split this into another part soon. And I am going to create an ID now. Or rather create another variable called ID. And then I'm going to set this dot id equals id that the user enters, and we're going to be making some switch statements to control what happens with each of the paddles. And the first thing we'll be controlling with the stitch switch statement will be a key pressed event, and that will take key event which we import e, and we're going to create a key code as always. Actually, we won't create a key code we'll just do it straight off if e dot get key code not key character key code is equal to e dot vk underscore um, up we'll be controlling the left paddle with up and down and the right paddle with w and s or rather vice versa the left paddle with w and s and the right paddle with up and down and i'm going to copy this and paste it four times up and down and W and S and now we're going to add a switch statement to make sure these ones run correctly so switch and we're testing the ID and we're first of all going to um, indent all of these and then we'll add our extra parameter at the end, we don't want to forget that. And we're first of all going to set the default action, because if the user enters a wrong ID, we only want 1 and 2 for players 1 and 2. If they enter 3 or something, we want we want to make an error message. And we're going to system out print line, please enter a valid ID in paddle constructor. There we go. And then we'll break. If you don't know how to use switch statements, then watch my beginner's Java switch tutorial. Uh, but in the case of it being one, we want to control the paddles with up and down. Or rather, W and S will say player two, case two here, and then case one. Here, I don't mean to, I didn't mean to switch them around. That's just how it worked out. I'll just cut and paste it to avoid confusion. But so now what we're doing is we're testing the ID in our key pressed function, 
and if the ID is 1, in other words, if the player, if it's 